Make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. And to never miss another lecture from Miracle, hit the bell icon to get regular updates on English literature. Hello and welcome to Miracle, English Language and Literature Institute. I'm Jashri Chauhan and I'm going to speak today on uh, a text on a very famous romantic poet and contemporary of William Wordsworth and Robert Surday. Of course, you guessed right, uh, S.T. Coleridge, Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Before starting, I would like to add uh, two or three things. You know, uh, before a few years, I am reading literature for a few years, of course. And before joining uh, this institute, Miracle Institute, I was reading literature only as syllabus in textbooks only. But you know, after joining here, I can find myself in a state where I can really say that I am in a flow of literature in its true spirit, as we all say. Okay. And second thing, you know, it's my first attempt, and. Um, Maybe I would uh, make few mistakes, so pardon me for that. Work without hope draws nectar in a seal, and hope without an object cannot live. Samuel okay, Taylor Coleridge, uh, one of the founder member, one of the founder poet of Romantic Age, and a literary critic, poet, theologian, philosopher, and uh, he was the one who actually introduced uh, German philosophies and theologies uh, into the English speaking culture. And he was actually the one who introduced American transcendentalism. Transcendentalism, which simply means any uh, theory or any philosophy which actually emphasizes a focus on more spiritual, intuitive things rather than empirical and material things. And now, if we speak about his early life, his biography, he was born on 21st October 17. Uh, 1772, town of Ottery St. Mary in Devon, England. His father was a reverend in St. Mary's Church. Uh, church. He was a, a renowned person and actually a respected person. He was also a principal of the Free Grammar School, which was actually established by Henry VIII. Since childhood, he took no pleasure in boyish sports and played by himself. Uh, after the, the death of his father in 1781, 18 years of college was sent to Christ Hospital Charity School in Greyfire. Spent his entire childhood there studying and writing poetry. There only he became Pensville's Charleston. There only he studied Virgil Arabian Nights uh, stories and uh, many renowned that time uh, critics and literary authors and writers and poets. His childhood days, if we describe him his own words, which now. Uh, can which can be described by these words by himself only. The tears made so deep impression on me that I was haunted by the spectres whenever I was in the dark, and I distinctly remember the anxious and fearful eagerness with which I used to watch the window in which the book lay, and whenever the sun lay on the books, I would seize it and carry it to the walls and bask and read them. He always idolized his father. He respected his father a lot, but he has always he has always problematic relations with his mother. And um, uh, he was since childhood he was a, a person who was so attention seeking, and which can actually be seen in his adulthood as well. His uh, his dependent behavior, his dependent personality was the image of his childhood. Actually, he was rarely allowed to return. Uh, to home from the school during the school days and actually this distance from his family was very damaging for him and his uh, personality as an adult uh, shows the reflection of this damaging effect, the distance from his family. In 1791 and 1794, he attended GS College, uh, Cambridge. Uh, he won the gold medal for an old which was a slave trade. In December 1793, he left college to join a group that was called Dragoons. It is said that he was in a lot of debts, debts. And it is also that said that he was in love with a girl, Mary Bones, who rejected him several times. And it is rumored that he has, uh, he has suffered many depression bouts because of this rejection. At college only, he was introduced to the political and theological ideas 
which was actually considered a radical at the time. And he, including Robert Sade, they opened a group which is called Pentisocracy. It was kind of a utopian communism group which was soon being abandoned by these two. In 1791, the two uh, Friends were married to two sisters, Sarah and Edith Fricker. However, Coleridge's marriage, marriage proved to be unhappy. He grew to detest his wife, whom he married only because of the social constraint, and they got soon separated. He started a journal, The uh, Watchman. Years 1797 and 1798, he lived in the Coleridge Cottage. Yes, of course, the Coleridge Cottage, which is known now in uh, Northern Stoneway, Somerset. In 1795, he met William Wordsworth and his sister Dorothy Wordsworth. William Wordsworth was enchanted by the surroundings of that area and he rented a house, El Foxton Park, there only. This place, a uh, place only beside the rhyme of ancient mariner, he composed the symbolic poem Kubla Khan as a result of an opium dream, which is said in a kind of reverie and the first part of his narrative poem, Christabel, as we of course know the Christabel, very famous, famous poem of him. During this period, he also produced his, his much praised conversation poem, it's the collection of conversation poem as it is titled, The Lime Tree Brown My Prison, Frost at Night and the Nightingale, and many more. In 1798, with William Wordsworth, they jointly Produced, he jointly published a volume of poetry which is called the Lyrical, Lyrical Ballads, which is the pioneer text of the starting of Romantic Age, as we all know. That collection of poetry, William Wordsworth uh, contributed many more poems and uh, it, but the red star of the collection was marked by his poem, The Rhyme of Ancient Mind. In autumn 1798, Coleridge and William Wordsworth started a journey. To Germany, and on that soon they were departed, and most of his time Coleridge spent in the university town. During this period only, he became interested in German philosophies, theologies, and transcendental idealism, and critical philosophies of Immanuel Kant and dramatic trilogies of Gotthard Lessing. He studied German, and after his return to England, he translated the dramatic trilogy, classical poets, Frederick Schiller. He continued to pioneer the ideas through his own critical reviews and critical texts. In 1799, he wrote a ballad poem, Love, addressed to his wife, Sarah. Coleridge was critical of the literary taste of his contemporary English-speaking people and the literature people. He was a literary conservative as so far as he was afraid that the lack of taste in the ever-growing masses of literature people would mean a continued discretion of literature itself. In, in 1800, he returned to England and he got settled with his friends and families as Kashmir. There only William Wordsworth was also living and he became the guest of William Wordsworth for 18 months because of his dependency on laudanum grew and his nightmares and screaming, the children got scared and he had to leave his house very soon. This dejection and this solitude had actually fueled the very famous poem, Dejection and Ode, as we all know, and the intensification of his philosophical studies. In 1804, he traveled to Sicily, Malta, working for as a time acting public secretary. This opium problem now began to take over his life and many crises have happened in his life. Then only he got separated from Sarah in 1808. He had traveled with William Wordsworth in 1810 and uh, he's lost his annuity in 1811. In 1809, he tries to become a publisher again of a journal, The Friend, weekly publication on which he worked so hard, he edited it, returned it single-handedly, but it was crippled soon because of the financial losses. Between 1810 and 1820, he gave a series of lectures in London and Bristol on Shakespeare. His reputation as a critical writer and critical speaker was established because of these lectures 
and the very famous lecture on Hamlet was given during 1812. During these lectures, because of his opium problem and he started to lose composure in the classrooms and the lectures also, during that time only, in 1812, he delivered a very famous renowned lecture on Hamlet. It is said that because of his critical lecture, the reputation of Hamlet was restored. He died at Highgate on 25th July 1834 due to a heart failure and an unknown allow disease. If you like my efforts, please like, comment and share and subscribe our channel. Thank you for watching me patiently. Until next time, take care. And, one more. and in the last, one more thing. Miracle is the right place for all the literature lovers. See all the poets. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching.